Good morning. Welcome to chapel. I'm Dr. Zhang Neguohi. The title of today's chapel is Hidden Dimensions and Faith. Recently, I came across these pictures on the web of some innovative products designed by a German company. I love innovative products or ideas. I collect them like girls collecting beautiful dolls or women expensive jewelry. I love to think outside the box or witness other people thinking outside the box. However, there is one situation that has been challenging my thinking outside the box ability. Seriously, no matter how much I stretch my brain or turn to my imagination power, I have not been able to come up with any satisfactory results. What is it? Well, let me use a video clip to explain it. A familiar object, just a candle and a holder, and imagine that we want to figure out what it is made of. So we go on a journey deep inside the object and examine the constituents. So deep inside, we all know you go sufficiently far down, you have atoms. We also all know that atoms are not the end of the story. They have little electrons that swarm around a central nucleus with neutrons and protons. Even the neutrons and protons have smaller particles inside of them, known as quarks. That is where conventional ideas stop. Here is the new idea of string theory. Deep inside any of these particles, there is something else. The something else is this dancing filament of energy. It looks like a vibrating string. That's where the idea of string theory comes from. And just like the vibrating strings that you just saw on a cello can vibrate in different patterns, these can also vibrate in different patterns. They don't produce different musical notes. Rather, they produce the different particles making up the world around us. So if these ideas are correct, this is what the ultramicroscopic landscape of the universe looks like. It's built up of a huge number of these little tiny filaments of vibrating energy, vibrating in different frequencies. The different frequencies produce the different particles. The different particles are responsible for all the richness in the world around us. And there you see unification, because matter particles, electrons and quarks, radiation particles, photons, gravitons, are all built up from one entity. So matter and the forces of nature all are put together under the rubric of vibrating strings, and that's what we mean by a unified theory. And here is the catch. When you study the mathematics of string theory, you find that it doesn't work in a universe that just has three dimensions of space. It doesn't work in a universe with four dimensions of space, nor five, nor six. Finally, you can study the equations and show that it works only in a universe that has 10 dimensions of space and one dimension of time. It leads us right back to this idea of Kaluza and Klein that our world, when appropriately described, has more dimensions than the ones that we see. It raises the question, are we just trying to hide away these extra dimensions, or do they tell us something about the world? And the remaining time, I'd like to tell you two features of them. First is, many of us believe that these extra dimensions hold the answer to what perhaps is the deepest question in theoretical physics, theoretical science. And that question is this. When we look around the world, as scientists have done for the last 100 years, there appear to be about 20 numbers that really describe our universe. These are numbers like the mass of the particles, like electrons and quarks, the strength of gravity, the strength of the electromagnetic force, a list of about 20 numbers that have been measured with incredible precision, but nobody has an explanation for why the numbers have the particular values that they do. Now, does string theory often answer? Not yet, but we believe the answer for why those numbers have the values they do may rely on the form of the extra dimensions. And the wonderful thing is, if those numbers had any other values than the known ones, the universe as we know it wouldn't exist. This is a deep question. Why are those numbers so finely tuned to allow stars to shine and planets to form when we recognize that if you fiddle with those numbers, if I had 20 dials up here and I let you come up and fiddle with those numbers, almost any fiddling makes the universe disappear. So can we explain those 20 numbers? Indeed, our universe is incredibly elegantly fabricated 
whether we realize it or not. Yes, what I have been stretching myself to think outside the box is the hidden dimensions of our universe that has been predicted by string theory. A step beyond the simple string theory called super string theory predicts yet another groundbreaking and provocative prediction. Here's another video clip I want to show you. The extra dimension Witten added allows a string to stretch into something like a membrane, or a brain for short. A brain could be three-dimensional, or even more. And with enough energy, a brain could grow to an enormous size, perhaps even as large as a universe. This was a revolution in string theory. String theory has gotten much more Baroque. I mean, now there are not only strings, there are membranes. People go on calling the string theory, but the string theorists are not sure it really is a theory of strings anymore. The existence of giant membranes and extra dimensions would open up a startling new possibility that our whole universe is living on a membrane inside a much larger, higher dimensional space. It's almost as if we were living inside a loaf of bread. Our universe might be like a slice of bread, just one slice in a much larger loaf that physicists sometimes call the bulk. And if these ideas are right, the bulk may have other slices, other universes that are right next to ours, in effect, parallel universes. Not only would our universe be nothing special, but we could have a lot of neighbors. Some of them could resemble our universe. They might have matter and planets and who knows, maybe even beings of a sort. Others could certainly be a lot stranger. They might be ruled by completely different laws of physics. Now, all of these other universes would exist within the extra dimensions of M-theory, dimensions that are all around us. Some even say they might be right next to us, less than a millimeter away. But if that's true, why can't I see them or touch them? If you have a brain living in a higher dimensional space and, you, and your particles, your atoms, cannot get off the brain, it's like trying to reach out, but you can't touch anything. It might as well be on the other end of the universe. Wow, parallel universes. There have been people asking me, how can you, as a Christian, consider bizarre ideas such as parallel universes? They think ideas like that are just completely against the Bible. I also have scientists making comments to me such as, don't you think you are too smart to believe those naive stories found in the Bible? But to me, there is no such tension between scientific findings of our world and what the Bible tries to reveal to us about God's creation. Honestly, at this point, knowing the complexity of our universe, I'm just super glad that there won't be any entrance exam like SAT, uh, our knowledge of the creation at the end of our life in order to be accepted into heaven. By the opposite, I find Bible verses like this one from the book Ecclesiastes are metaphorical ways to convey the fact that our space might consist of more than three dimensions. Listen, a bird in the sky may carry your words, and a bird on the wing may report what you say. In fact, if the high-dimensional membrane model of the universe is true, then people could certainly be much more connected than we normally think, and abstract things like thoughts and prayers would probably carry just as much physical power as the wind, the sunshine, 
gravity or electric power? Why does the Bible tell us to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, instead of work hard, get all A's, make lots of money? Here, the actions rejoice, pray, give thanks seem to be so really related to obtaining success in today's world, yet the Bible instructs us to do. And not only so, there is a sense of urgency that's communicated in this verse for us to do such things. Let's imagine for a minute another civilization that is much less advanced than we are. And humans there don't know the thing called gravity. Imagine in their Bible it reads, Stay on solid ground. Do not jump into an empty space. Following this commandment is obviously vitally important to them. It is at one hand a commandment God gives to those people out of love as he has done for us in our Bible. But at the same time, gravity is the physical reason behind the commandment. Now, is it possible that there are physical laws unknown to us in the hidden dimensions that govern the mechanism of prayers? If that's true, then it's natural to understand the urgency of praying without ceasing. It would be just as vital as staying on solid ground and do not into empty space. Pray without ceasing. Have you ever been a victim of food poisoning and threw up all night? Horrible, isn't it? But fortunately, it doesn't usually last more than 24 hours. But during that time, the last thing you want to do is to eat, and the last word you want to hear is food. However, imagine you can get a smart stomach. Such a smart stomach would make everything taste ultra-delicious. Broccoli would taste as good as brownie, and carrots as yummy as Cheetos. What's more, such a stomach would work with the digestion system, so that not a single market of poisonous heavy metal or pesticides in the contaminated food would go into your bloodstream, and not an ounce of extra fat would be absorbed. Such a smart stomach would take only the perfect combination of proteins, carbohydrates, fat, and minerals, just the right amount of what the body needs, and effortlessly expel anything extra just to make you feel perfect, healthy, and energetic. Would you want to have such a stomach? To me, faith is like such a smart stomach. With faith, God's word tastes delicious, but without faith, God's word seems illogical, boring, or even contradictory. With faith, we we'll naturally desire to read God's word, like wanting ice cream on a hot summer day. Without faith, we would be rejecting God's word, like we reject food when we get food poisoning. With faith, the knowledge of the physical laws becomes a part of the giant puzzle in the grand picture of God's creation, and each new law of physics we learn or discover would help us admire the mechanisms God uses to create the universe. However, without faith, the knowledge will only serve to push us away from God. The good news is, faith is a gift from God. It's available to everybody, totally free of charge. Because the Bible promises us, Ask, you will be given. Seek, you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. What a relief. So let's not be shy. Let's ask. Please bow your head and pray with me. Our Heavenly Father, we ask today for the gift of faith. Please give it to us, so we can understand you better through your words as well as your creation. Increase and multiply our faith by a hundred, a thousand times, so we can be in closer communion with you, the Creator, with whom reside all beauty, wisdom, 
knowledge, and truth. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. The video clips I showed you are from a TED Talk and also the World Science Festival lecture series. It was led by the Columbia University professor Brian Green. So please feel free to check them out on the internet. Thank you for attending this chapel. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Goodbye.